Hello everybody, this is Ego Norugai Uwekawa. Today I am visiting Toshin High School's website and I'm looking at the English test used for Senate test this January for senior high school students to take this entrance exam for going to public universities. One of the uh, questions that they ask on the test is that uh, uh, it's the question about accent position. Uh, that you are given a set of words and they ask you where accent position lies. The first word is novel, parade, and rescue, and vital. And each word has this rhythm of two, bum bum, because they are two syllable words. And they ask you which syllable carries an accent, or kyosei in Japanese, which roughly translated stress. If you use your common sense, you would think that stress means that the uh, volume, attack volume of uh, your voice. So it has to be about volume. So you are supposed to be uh, identifying which part has the largest or biggest volume. Another interpretation of this is that uh, stress or accent should mean pitch or even the length uh, some people and many people have ambiguous understanding of the concept of accent. I called the Department of Education in Japan and they told me that the definition of accent position depends on the teacher. I myself have lived in the United States for the past 18 years, but uh, I have to tell you that in the English language, stress position or accent position is not so crucial. And we have to really question whether there are really accent positions for all of these words. And if there is, is that a matter of pitch or uh, volume of your voice or length? Uh, I want to really test that. Okay, so these words are, are novel, uh, par uh, parade, rescue, and vital. Native speakers of English do not necessarily know uh, where the accent position lines lies. For example, pick a word novel. As a native speaker, you wouldn't really know which is it nav or vol. You don't really know which one is more emphasized. Japanese students would typically typically memorize this word as uh, novel, novel. So it is kind of obvious because that's they that's that's how they learned in the first place. The same thing goes for other words like rescue and uh, parade. It's the same thing. So let's take a look at uh, this problem more carefully. Uh, this website that I am looking at right now is Webster uh, Miriam Dictionary and I put a word that I want to do a search on and then I was able to get uh, prior to this recording I was able to get uh, get some sound files like this one this file is saying novel and this section the beginning section which corresponds to the first syllable is nav and the other end is vol as you can see there is a pitch difference because nav sounds a little higher in pitch than the other part so Accent position should mean pitch. In our book, Ego Nodo, we are teaching as the issue of where you resonate your throat. Nav is resonated at the upper part of the throat, of the neck, but vol part, you have to go down to the bottom level. Navol. That's how we explain it in our book. But in Japan, people say the stress position or accent position is about the volume, generally speaking, that would be the first definition that people think about. So let's look at one of these uh, meters here. That shows you how loud uh, the sound was. And as you see, it was as loud as to the a point where it is close to the right end. It's probably like a two or three millimeters from the right end. So that's as loud as it is. And what about the second part? Let's listen to it. Vol. But it's exactly showing the same level of volume.
What about the length? I mean, the two portions, two syllables, have ex uh, approximately about the same length. So, so what does this mean? If the dictionary says that there is an accent position for the first part of the word, this cannot be an issue of volume. This should easily uh, uh, contradicts the fact, and I mean. Uh, but, but still, but still, people continue to uh, be tested on this uh, accent position problem every year, and people keep the definition of the word of the word accent very vague. So, uh, I think people don't want to really see this accent position as a matter of pitch because nobody really is taught, uh, really justifying the accent position as the matter of pitch in the scholarly community. So what about the, um, so what about another word, parade? Okay, I am testing the volume level of the first part and the two parts are recording exactly the same volume level. So this should make us conclude that the um, absolute level of volume is the same for the two syllables. Uh, but the length of the second part of the word raid was a little longer because uh, probably the fact that the raid was a diphthong, raid, two vowels. So that was why probably the raid part was longer than the first part. The next, the third word is rescue, rescue, again. The two syllables are registering with the same level of volume. So naturally, we have to conclude that this uh, test question of accent position. What does this mean? What does this mean? So people talk about the first accent position or the second position, but this issue cannot be about volume. But this can be really a matter of um, pitch. So that's that. That's all. And, and that's why native speakers of English cannot even solve this problem because accent position is not really you can't even tell the difference when you hear it, which part is strong as I showed you using this software. It takes so much time to memorize the accent position forever, so hopefully very soon this type of test item should be abolished, hopefully. According to our approach, or our book Ego Nodo teaches you to classify all of the English sounds into the upper part resonation or lower part of resonation, like R is pronounced at the bottom of the neck, which is why it has a like a, it has a very resonant and deep lower tone to tonality to it. What about another word? Another sound A. It goes a little bit up. A is yeah, A is resonated at the upper part of the neck, which is why when you say the word um, um, parade, it sounds like uh, and then go down, raid goes up. So we are explaining every sound in the English language can be associated with this part or that part, which is related to the uh, resonance the issue and the pitch problem. And I'm explaining here that uh, this type of question is always asking about multisyllabic words, which is not really the major signature feature of the English language. The basic words that we use in the English language are predominantly one syllable word. Just pick one song from the Beatles. Most of the words that they use in their songs are one syllable words. So that shows you how in English the basic core of the English vocabulary uh, are consist, I mean, consist of one syllable word. But these words that they use on the test are foreign words. Latin words, French words, those words that were borrowed from foreign countries. So it's ironic that Japanese students are forever studying uh, foreign words and how or where the accent position falls, um, which I think is very ironic because those are 
not the essential words or core words in this English language. And I hope, hope everybody realizes that. Everybody realizes that. <laughs> Which is the end of this footage. Thank you for listening.